evening we'll be getting on shortly. A uh, year of learning, Dr. Paul Konigsberg, in memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimon Ruven ben Leibish, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nissen Hara, Nissen ben Fardosa. Paula and Bob Bromberg, in memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda ben Yisrael, Malcolm Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Rav Tzvi Hirschman, Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Rav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom ben Yitzchak Kalevi. Friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova bat Yisrael Dov. Friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bat Yosef. Friends of Avi Gidler, Avra Meir Ben Shimon. Cheryl Scher, her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Israel Ben Arav Akiva, Marsha Federbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Uriel Paul Federbush, Uriel Ben Harav Shimon. A month of learning by Phyllis and Chaim Reese, in memory of her father, Pinchas Ben Avraham, a week of learning by Michael and Judith Poretsky, in memory of his brother, Avram Ben Gershon. And that is it for today. We've got a number on Sunday, which we'll announce then. May Shemus have an Aliyah, Krank Rafia, Velta Yeshir, Shema Talia, and the Chobane Israel, a good Gabenched Yah. I think Zev must have. Uh, Jet power on his chair there that he gets back from minions so quick. I fly, that's why. Fly. Oh boy. Right. For learning, that's good, Sam. Right? Zrizi in the mitzvahs. Zrizi in the mitzvahs. Zrizi makdimim the mitzvahs. Right. I understand that. And uh, okay, thank you. All right, uh, Kav Zion Amud Aleph is where we left off, I believe, right? Okay, let's, uh, I'm just going to quickly pick up review and then move right on, okay? Okay, remember that we saw there was a question of was our Text according to Rabbi Eliezer, and they tried to give the example of uh, Seor of Chulen fell into with Truma, fell into a container. Okay, does it? What's the practice there? What's the result? And the Gemara completed on the bottom of Kav Vavamud Beis really quickly. The Chachamim Amrim Bein Shenafal Isul Lechachila Bein Shenafal Isul Levasof. And that's unless each one was enough theoretically to uh, make the dough rise on its own. And then Abai tries to come forward with his statement. <coughs> okay, that he anticipated and took out the, uh, the uh, inappropriate material. He removed what was Isur. But if it's not, it is Asur. Therefore, that would seem to imply Goreim, the Goreim, right? Two items, Goreim, Zevize Goreim, results in Isur. Alma, Zevize Goreim Isur. And that's sort of where we ended up. Okay? But that was the view of Rabbi Eliezer. Now the Gemara is going to challenge. Umimai Tama, the Tama de Rabbi Eliezer Ka'abai, how do you know, asks the Gemara, that Rabbi Eliezer's view was as explained by Abai? Dilma Tama de Rabbi Eliezer. Perhaps the reasoning of Rabbi Eliezer He's suggesting the Gemara, Mishum da Achar Acharon Aniba, 
that he really goes following after the last item that falls in to the, what we said was the, the bottom, the mixed, the existing uh, chulen there. Lo shna kadem v'sileik et ha'isur. And it doesn't make a difference if he proceeded and removed what was forbidden. Lo shna lo kidem v'sileik et ha'isur. And also it doesn't make a difference if he didn't um, move ahead, uh, anticipate, let's say, and remove what is forbidden. Aval bevat echat, but in when they fall in together, namely both the seor that's truma and the seor that's chulen, following into another dough, a bunch of dough, Hachanami Deshare, that since they fell in together, maybe he would say in that case, since there is not enough of each one separately to make that dough rise, therefore, Zevaze Logore. So the Gemara picks up. Ela Rabbi Eliezer, the Atse Ashira, the Tanah. So rather, says the Gemara, maybe Rabbi Eliezer was talking about the whole issue of the wood from an Asherah tree. The Tnan, as taught elsewhere in a Mishnah. Natal Himena Eitzim Asurim Bahana'a. If one took from this, such a tree branches, okay, they are forbidden by, for benefit. If one used those branches to heat up an oven, if the oven were new, they must shatter the oven. If it's an old oven, he must allow it to cool off. Afabo et apat. If he baked in that oven bread, asurin bahana'a, that bread is forbidden for any benefit. Now the Gemara says, nit arva ba'acherot, that bread got mixed in with others, va'acherot ba'acherot, and other, think of pita, okay? small, round, can be stuck on the inside of the oven, of an earthenware oven, or stuck on the floor of the earthenware oven to bake. And that one got mixed in with a whole lot of others. Kulan asurin bahana'a. They're all to be considered prohibited for benefit. Now, the Gemara wants to tell us the following. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, what would Rabbi Eliezer then tell us? All right. Yoli Hana'a Liyam HaMelech. At this point, Rabbi Eliezer might come to say, whatever the value, financial value of that wood would have been, take the equivalent money and throw that money into the Dead Sea. In other words, you're going to, in a sense, poder the item by taking that equivalent money, giving that, not benefiting from that money, discarding it, and that would be the satisfactory means of being poder, of redeeming it, okay? So in that case, this money of equal value, okay, would be a way of still then deriving benefit from that bread, even having used the Asherah wood, okay? Now, Amarlo, they responded to Rabbi Eliezer's suggestion of this idea, Ein pidyon la avodazara, that there is no possibility of pidyon, of redemption, 
okay, in regards to the laws of items that uh, uh, are connected with a votazara. And more. So therefore, we might say, I might say again, the Shemat Leila Rabbi Eliezer Ba'avodah Zara. Are you sure you would have learned or had heard that this was Rabbi Eliezer's view in regarding to Avodah Zara? After all, the Chamir Isura, because there the prohibitions are particularly stringent. Bashar Isurin Shibatorah Mishamatle. But in regards to other prohibitions that we find in the Torah, did you learn that he says the same thing? Okay, that he might prohibit it or he might allow for a pigeon in that situation? Ella Imke. If that's the case, Aman Tarmaye. Okay, on whom do we attribute this text? Right? Who's the basis of what we have here? The ode, and furthermore, says the Gemara, Ha Tanya Behedya. Okay, isn't it taught specifically, right? In another Brighta. Bechain Haya Rabbi Eliezer Oser Bechol Isurin Shebetorah. That Rabbi Eliezer made a, an item that Zevazegorem is prohibited in regards to other prohibitions found in the Torah. Okay. Now, having gotten this far, Abaye and uh, is going and is going to make a further uh, comment. Okay. Amar Abaye. Imtim Selomar, he says, if you want to say this idea, Zev Zegorim Asur, okay, that the idea of two items mixing then results in a final product jointly that is should be forbidden. Okay. Rebbe, Hainu Rebbe Eliezer. If that's the case, then Rebbe's statement, which we saw back earlier, okay, uh, seems to be saying the same thing as Rebbe Eliezer. The imtum selomar vezegorim zevezegorim mutar. And if you want to say that the mixing of these two items, okay, uh, into a joint product is permitted. But here in this case, we might say that there is an improvement to the bread from having been baked on this wood. Okay. What about the following? What about the earthenware uh, bowls or cups? or flasks, asire, they would be forbidden. Now the Gemara picks up, ki pligi betanur, when they argue about the oven, ukdeira, and a pot, laman amar zeveze gorein, asur, and they say that <coughs> the combination of two different items is forbidden. Asur, it is forbidden. Lamanda amar zevezegorem mutar shari. It's forbidden for that. But on the other hand, others say that they mix two items. It's permitted. It's and it's okay. Now says the Gemara. Ikeda amre. There are those, however, who phrase this discussion a following. Even according to the ones who say that the combination of two items, okay, into a third product combined is permitted. Kadera asura. If it's done in a pot, it is prohibited. Dahaki bla 
בישולה מקאמי דניתן עצים דהתרה. Why? Because we're saying that here the cooking procedure for that pot was done while it was still being heated by forbidden wood and it was before that permitted wood was used to do that cooking. And so therefore the contents of that pot would be asur. Now, Amar Rabbi Yosef, Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. Okay, following. Tanur Shehesiko Beklipe Orla. Sounds familiar, right? An oven that was heated by the peels of produce that were orla fruits. O Bikashin Shel Klai Hakerem. Or for straw that had been grown, right, from a Klayim, right, in the vineyard. Chadash, if the oven is new, yutatz, it needs to be shattered. Yashan, if it's an old oven, it, you, right? Yutzat, yutzan, it needs to be cooled off. Afa bo et apat, if one baked bread in it, okay, well, the, uh, and the, the, uh, heat source was still that forbidden items. Rabbi Omer hapat muteret. Rabbi says the bread is permitted. V'chachamim omrim hapat asura. And the sages say the bread is forbidden. So here's our question. V'hat tanya ipcha. But didn't we have a brighter that taught us exactly the opposite? Namely, that Rebbe forbade the bread and the sages permitted it. So what happens, says the Gemara? Shmuel Ipchatani. Shmuel taught it in an alternative method. I'm going to say it this way. I could say he taught it in reverse, okay? But in an alternative, namely, the Ibayat Ema. And if you want, I might say as follows. Ba'alma kasavar Shmuel, that Shmuel thought in general, okay, the following, halacha karebi michavero, that the law is according to Rebbe when he's in machloket with a colleague, velo michaverav, but the law is not according to Rebbe if there are multiple colleagues in opposition to him. Ubaha. And in this case, afilu mechavarav, okay? Even in this case, when it is a situation with multiple colleagues. The Savar and Reb Shmuel then thought, et neu ipcha, I will teach it in the reverse, right? Ki hechi denikum rabanan leisura. So that it will mean that I will teach it so that the rabbis maintain the prohibition. And since that's the halacha, that will be how people will be able to remember the, how to behave. Okay. Now we get to our new item. Bishla algabe gechalim divrei hakol hapat muteret. Okay says the Mishnah, right? We have taken this Asherah wood. It's been burnt. And now all we've got is the coals from that Asherah wood. And we cook on those coals. It would seem here, it says the Mishnah, right? Then, okay, we have bread baking in that on those coals. Even if they're from the Asherah wood, it seemed to be implied that they are, the bread is permitted. However, the Gemara now continues. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Rabbi Chia Bar Ashi, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Chad Amar, Lo Shanu Ela Gechalim, Omamot. One said 
It only depends if those are dim or smoldering coals. Aval gechalim lo chashot, but if they are glowing or flickering coals, asurim, then that bread would be prohibited. V'chad amar afilu gechalim lo chashot, and the other said, even if it is the glowing, the flickering coals, right? What? Nami mutarim. It's also permitted. Says the Gemara Bishlema Lamanda Amar Lochashot Asurim. That's acceptable to the one who says that the glowing or flickering coals are prohibited, right? Why? Because there's some improvement of the bread being baked. Okay. But according to the one who says <coughs> such glowing right, coals, such flickering coals are permitted. Pat da asar. The Yesh Shavach Etzim the Pat the Rebbe. We have a statement here, right? Where Rebbe forbids the bread, right? In this case, right? How, how can it be possible that we say that Rebbe, okay, would improve it, would permit it, where the bread is, where the coals from the Asherah would, are going to, again, still seem to benefit the quality of the bread that's baked. Hechi mishkachet. Amar Rav Papa, says Rav Papa, keshe avuka kenegdo. Rav Papa explains what we're talking about here is a situation that the bread is heated not directly because of the wood, but because the flame inside the oven is such that it's opposite the area that's being baked. That is the situation. As we go on, Miklau, the Rabbanan, the Pligi Ele, Sharu, Afilu, Kesha Avuka, Kenegdo. Why? Because we see here, the implication is that even the rabbis who argued with him permit that bread when the flaming wood, okay, if we want to call it like that, the direct flame is opposite the items being baked. Okay. When they said that it has to, they, the oven has to cool off, an old oven has to cool off, doesn't that mean all the flames are gone? Um, okay, that's a good question. Think of the, the following, okay? If the oven is cooled off, right? It therefore means that kindling, right? So then you would be able to remove, the, clean out the bottom of the oven where whatever coals or pieces of, uh, of uh, inappropriate yeah. wood would be found and instead put fresh wood in. So that would be the case. Okay. So the Gemara says, Ella, rather, it seemed the Isura the Rabbanan, Hechimishkachet Laho. Right? But what do you do about the case which is similar to what you're asking? How, what about a case where the wood is forbidden, according to the rabbi? We're talking about the fact that they took wood that had been uh, broken from a bench or a stool or something like that. Okay? In other words, the, the, uh, case, the uh, wood from that tree had been carved or made into an object. And then that wood was then utilized. Okay, all right. And so right, in that way, it's as if you're 
It's a new material. Well, look at an art scroll 27B1 note number four. Okay, where he tries to give an interpretation. It's only the benefit from the burning the wood that the rabbis permitted and not from any other use of the wood. Okay, because you're actually destroying the item. Right? So that's the suggestion that Art Scrolls explanation gives. Okay, which would make sense, right? Okay. Yeah, you think you think of a barbecue that you're making. You you go, it goes through all those stages. You have flame at the start. Yeah. And then smoldering and. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, by my name, Rami Barchama Mirav Christo. Okay. Now a new discussion. Right. We're still talking about ovens. Tanur shehisiku ba'atse hektesh. What about the fact, says the, he asks, a problem of an oven that's been heated by wood that was consecrated wood? Okay. Now, why someone would take, somebody would not take wood that was already, let's say, in the base of Mikdash, but they may have decided that they had wood at home. And they said, well, the next time I bring a korban, I'll bring the wood for the korban as well. So that wood is therefore considered hektesh, right? But for some reason they forgot or they sent a servant and that servant grabbed that wood, okay? He didn't put it in a separate pile or whatever and it's now in the oven, right? And they bake bread on that, right? The Rabbanan, the Sharu Bekamaita. Okay, and what do we have here? Okay, what about the law that the rabbis previously would have said permitted? Mai, what is it? Amarle, he answered him. Rav Chista. Hapat asura, that the bread would be prohibited. Uma ben zola orla, and how different is that then, I'm saying, between the example we had earlier of bread that was made from the peels of orla, okay? Ama rabba, hachi hashta. Namely, says rabba, what kind of a comparison is that? Orla, Betela b'matayim. Okay, at least with regards to oil, we can have be mavatel one in two hundred. Hektesh afilu be'elif lo batil. In terms of the sanctity of something, it never becomes batil. Ela amar rav. Rather, rav explains as follows: ikashile hakasha. If it was problematic for him, namely for Rami Bar Chama, this is what was the problem. Vahalo ma'al hamasik. Aren't we therefore saying that the person who kindled that wood is subject to the transgression of me'ila, right? Misuse of hektesh. The kol hecha de ma'al hamasik. And whenever we see that the one who does the lighting committed me'ila, naf we say that it it a state of chulin. Now, amal Rav Papa says Rav Papa, hacha ba'atzei shlamim askin. According to Rav Papa, right? We're saying we're dealing here with wood that was consecrated for the purpose, okay, in advance, like I gave the suggestion earlier, right, for a shlamim offering. Va'aliba the Rabbi Yehuda. And this is the view of Rabbi Yehuda. Da'amar hekdesh. 
the Rabbi Yehuda the Amar Hekdesh, that when Rabbi Yehuda says it is consecrated, Bishoge Mikhalel. If it was taken accidentally, it becomes deconsecrated. Okay? Amazing. If it was done on purpose, however, with intent, right? It does not become deconsecrated. Amazed my tamalo asks the Gemara. If it was done on purpose, why? Why doesn't it become deconsecrated? Kevanda love bar me'ilu. At that point, don't we say that it is no longer, right? Shouldn't it no longer be subject to the prohibition of me'ila? Lo na fake lechulen. It then doesn't go and become into a status of chulen. Shlamim nami. Okay? But maybe we're going to say it applies to the shlamim as well. Kevan de lav bar me'ilin. Since in that case, right, they're not subject to me'ila laws either, right? Lo nafka lechulen. It doesn't, also doesn't become chulen. And do we really say that wherever the person lights it, okay, that uh, using those wood, that it becomes chulen? Vahatanya. But aren't we taught elsewhere in a brighter the following, okay, namely as a challenge, kol hanisrafin afaran Mutar chutz me at at say ashera that anything that's burnt, that's its ashes, then are permitted, with the exception of wood from an ashera. The afar hakodesh leolam asur, and then the brighter adds, and ash from something that's been consecrated remains continues to be forbidden. Now, Gemara says, Amar Rami Barchama. Rami Barchama then says as follows, Kagon shenafla dleka me'aleha ba'atzei ha'kodesh. Deleka inish den'am'u. Let's say there's a situation that the Brita is referring to a case where a some sort of fire broke out, if we can say on its own, among the consecrated wood, right? And in that case, we don't have a person committing an act of me'ila whatsoever. Or we get another alternative answer. Rav Shimi Omer. Okay, so Rav Shemaya says, Ba'otan, okay, in terms of that consecrated ash, Shetaunin Gniza, says it requires being put away. Right? Titania, as taught in the Brita, Visamo. Remember, we had about the Trumat Hadeshen. Okay, the same way that has to be put in a certain way, it also has to be put away. Benachat, namely, it says it has to be put in a, I'm going to say, in a careful resting place. Visamo, and when we understand put away, kulo, all of it. Visamo, and again, to be put away aside, shalo yefazer, that it does not uh, spread out, blow away, things like that. Okay? Now, a new piece from our Mishnah. Right? Rabbi Yehuda Omer says, Rabbi Yehuda, right? Ein Be'or. Right? So what is he telling us here? Right? That basically, okay, remember it was Rabbi Yehuda who said the only way you can destroy Chalit is by burning. 
So here now, Tanya, we have a brighter. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Eim biur chametz el asrefa. There's our brighter, right? That there's no destruction, elimination of chametz except by burning. Vahadin no tain, he says. And logic follows. Uma no tar she'ino gabal yira'e ubal yimatse ta'un srefa. In the same way that no tar, left over, right? Korb Kodesh, okay, is not subject to the prohibitions of not being seen or not being found, and it requires burning. Chametz, right? Sheyeshno b'vayimatzeh. That is subject, right, to the prohibitions of not being seen and not being found. Local shikim shata unsreifa. Isn't it certainly the case that it should require uh, burning? Amrulo. So they said to him, Kol din shata dam tchilato lahachmir v'sofo lahakel. Any, all right, kal v'chomer. That you are going to determine where initially it would appear, I'm going to say, to be a stringency, but the result ultimately is a kula, is a leniency, a no din. It's not a valid kalvachomer. Okay? Lo matza etzim lesorfo. Okay? What happens then, says the Gemara, if one does not find the wood to bound, to burn the uh, the, the chametz, Yehe Yoshev Ubatel, is the result going to be that he doesn't eliminate it whatsoever? And he just, and he the just sits there and it, right? And it continues. Vaha Torah Amra. But the Torah specifically says, Tashbitu Soormi Batsheikhim, to destroy, remove. All leaven from your homes. Bechol davar hashbito. In any manner, I'm going to say that you're able to remove it. What happens? Chazar Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi Yehuda comes back. Vidanu dina cher, and he's going to give us another kalva, a different one, namely, no tar asur ba'achila. Leftover korban meat is forbidden by eating. The chametz asur ba'achila. And chametz is forbidden from eating. And here's our kavachoma coming. Mano tar besreifa. Where no tar must be burnt. Af chametz besreifa. So chametz must be by burning. Amrulo, they said to him, Nevela tochiach. What about the hide of an animal? Sha'asura ba'achila, that's forbidden for eating. Ve'eno te'unasrefa, but it doesn't require burning. Amar lehem, so he said to them, hefresh, there's a difference there. There's a separation. Motar asur ba'achila ubahana'a, leftover korban meat, is forbidden both for eating and benefit. V'chametz asur ba'achila ubahana. And chametz is forbidden by eating and benefit. Ma no tarta unsreifa. The same way no requires burning. Av chametz ta unsreifa. So likewise chametz challenge him again. We'll take the example of the ox sentenced to be stoned for killing a human being. Okay, any meat or hide of that ox is forbidden for eating and benefit. And it doesn't require burning. He said to them, still there's a difference here. 
נותר אסור באכילה ובהנאה ואנושקורת. Okay? That the leftover korban meat is forbidden in eating and benefit. And also it's punishable by chorus, right? As it's uh, for, uh, right? Using it, utilizing it, eating it, doing anything with it. And consumption of chomets also is forbidden, as well as benefit, as well as doing so of any of that is prohibited and punishable by chorus. Again, trying to make his combination is parallel there okay Amrulo they challenge him again namely the fat right of that ox sentenced to be stone will be our proof Shasur Baakila that we say it's forbidden in consumption, eating, benefit, and the punishment if you break those is chorus. And it does not require any burning. Okay, we'll go over just a little bit. Chazar Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda came back. Vidanu Dina Kher. And he tries another, right? No time. Yesh no Babal Totiru. Okay? With no time, we have a prohibition. Babal Totiru. And with Chomets, you have a prohibition, okay? Of leaving any over, right? With this course being forbidden, for, you know, and punishment. Chorus and no benefit and things like that, right? Manotar b'sreifa, af chametz b'sreifa. So likewise again, should be burnt. Amrulo, they said to him, asham talui, v'chatat ta'of, other kinds of offerings, right? Again, a, a I don't want to say hanging, but uh, a, a, a asham talui, a questionable asham, right? Ba'al hasafek. They're both situations where there is questionable activity, right? And questionable if you have to bring. The davrecha yochichu. Okay? We will use those examples and your own words as proof. Shehein ba'al totiru. Okay, that they are in, again, not being left over. Sha'anu omrim b'sreifa. Okay, that we say they have to be burnt. Va'ato omer b'kivura. And you say it, Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda was silent. And that's where we're going to stop today, guys. Okay? Right? So the Gemara then is going to pick up tomorrow, okay? We'll see what happens in that case with other uh, uh, issues, right? So everybody have a good Shabbos and take care and stay well. Amen.